An Airway Heights traffic stop led to larger findings. And Gonzaga and Eastern Washington have announced that they will be delaying lifting their max mandates. Find out what that might mean for WSU here on Morrow News 8. Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Vasily Varlamos. And I'm Pam Dele Shogun. Welcome to Murrow News 8. 27-year-old Joseph Baker is now facing prosecution after police arrested him on several narcotics charges during a traffic stop in Colfax last fall. According to Pullman Radio, deputies reportedly found 150 fentanyl tablets, 24, 48 grams of heroin, 53 grams of methamphetamine, $825 in cash, and a loaded handgun during the traffic stop. Baker has had at least six previous felony charges and will appear in federal court in Spokane later this month. The state of Washington is lifting its max mandate on Saturday. Due to the timing of the upcoming spring break, some universities, including Gonzaga and Eastern Washington, are opting to keep their requirements in place, while others like Washington State University, Withwart University, and community colleges of Spokane are planning to follow the date set by Governor Jay Inslee. We tried to contact Phil Weisler if Gonzaga and Eastern Washington's decision will have an effect on WS's decision, but we were not able to get a response. Speaking of mass mandates, our very own Aaron Monson traveled to Arizona to compare the differences between the WSU COVID response to Grand Canyon universities. According to WSU Insider, flaring of natural gas from oil wells in North Dakota appeared to cause an increase of 11,000 hospital visits for respiratory reasons. WSU Assistant Professor Wesley Blundell said the, sh the shale oil boom in North Dakota happened so quickly and is so far from other oil drilling locations, they didn't have infrastructure to process and clean the natural gas. The Whitman County Association of Realtors is offering $1,000 scholarship to graduating Whitman County area students. You'll have to be attending WSU in the fall to receive this award. You must also have a letter of recommendation from a non-family member to be eligible for the award. The United Nations' latest climate change report forecasts bad news for a host of issues from rising food insecurity to increasing social inequality in North America. WSU's Emeritus, Emeritus Professor of Archaeology and Evolutionary Anthropology, Tim Kohler, said that this will continue unless steps are taken now to reduce global carbon emissions. In Seattle, the report predicts sea level rise will threaten low-lying areas, near shore habitats, stormwater drains, roads, homes, and businesses. Overall, the report predicts major losses to North America's biodiversity, hundreds of billions of dollars in economic losses in the U.S., and spikes in heat-related human mortality and crime during the hot summer months. Moscow community leaders can ask questions about the recently developed climate action plan tomorrow at 6 p.m. on Zoom. The meeting is a chance for people to learn more, address any concerns, and provide feedback. The plan calls for the city to reach carbon neutrality by 2050 and reduce emissions by almost 57% by 2030. As the race for later county treasurer intensifies, Democrat County Treasurer B.J. Swanson has drawn a familiar opponent. Peggy Gottschalk, a Republican, has filed a candidacy for the position. Gottschalk lost to Swanson four years ago when the position was an open seat. Candidate filings for the local seat is up for election this year in Idaho and runs through Friday. Skyrocketing fuel prices is causing an unexpected burden on farmers this year. With unleaded and diesel gas prices continue to, raise, to rise and changes in the gain market. Farmers in the area are worried about the spring planting season after last year's drought. As a result, the U.S. Wheat Association reported that wheat prices are surging across the country. Soft red winter wheat, red winter wheat, and soft white wheat all jumped in price this week over by 60 cents. 
The search for the next Pullman Regional Hospital Chief Executive Officer is down to four finalists. Hospital officials are not releasing candidates' names to the public. Each finalist will meet with six panels of local officials this month, including WSU, the City of Pullman, and more. Longtime PRH CEO Scott Adams retired at the end of last year after 30 years as CEO. WSU has eliminated its system-wide vice president of student affairs position and replaced it with the vice chancellor post for Pullman campus. This is said to be part of Kirk Shield's decision to focus on the institution statewide in a CEO role while handing management of the local campus to inaugural WSU Pullman Chancellor Elizabeth Chilton. Ellen Taylor has been working as an interim student affairs VP. In a statement posted on WSU's website, Taylor has been named to the new cha vice chancellor job for WSU Pullman. Taylor previously worked as an associate vice president for student engagement for three years. The Spokane Police Department is looking for the person who shot and killed a man late Monday just south of Maple, Bridge, Maple Street Bridge. Early information suggests an argument preceded the shooting. Detectives have not yet identified the shooter, although there is one possible sub suspect. The weather has been consistently chilly. We'll find out if we should be expecting warmer weather temperatures after the break. Well, I, start, I thought spring started in March, but so far winter weather continues to hit our area hard. Let's take it over to Zane at the weather board to see what we can expect next from Mother Nature. Thanks, Vasily. Well, we did actually top out a little over freezing today with 34 degrees, but we'll have a low tonight of 17 degrees. However, the sun rose at 6.13 a.m. with it setting at 5.46 p.m. We're gaining those two minutes in the morning and, and evening. Moving on to tomorrow, uh, we're going to get a little warmer. It's going to be 38 with that low being 25. As we move on to the state map, map, we'll start over on the west side with Olympia and Seattle. It is warm over there. It's 47, 45. As we continue through the state, it's also in the 40s with, with the Yakima in the, at, at 42, Tri-Cities at 45. Here in Pullman and Spokane, however, though, though the, we are in the 30s topping out today. Today, as we move on to the, to the five-day forecast, Cast. Uh, as we go on, we're going to continue to get warmer. However, the unfortunate thing, yes, it's not Seattle, but we're going to have rain this weekend as we all head over home to for spring break or for those of you leaving the state. So as we continue, it's going to get a little warmer, but unfortunately, rain's in the foreca forecast. Back to you guys over at the desk. Thank you, Shane. There's been some major college and professional sport news this week. Find out what's new for the Cougs and what, what's happening with another big name Seahawks player that isn't named Russell Wilson next. Dad, they took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad, one, two, Three. Dad! You saved me! Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. 
Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. I'm Derek Strom with your sports. WSU men's basketball begins their Pac-12 tournament run against Cal tonight. The Cougs swept the Golden Bears during the regular season, but their last game was a slim four-point win on the road. WSU is hitting their stride going into the tournament after a statement win against Oregon, whereas Cal is struggling, losing their last two games of the season by a combined 55 points. If WSU wins that game, they'll play a third-seeded UCLA in the, in the next round. And three Cougs were named to all Pac-12 teams ahead of the conference tournament. Leading scorer Michael Flowers made the all Pac-12 second team. Five-time freshman of the week Muhammad Gay made the all freshman team. And F.A. Abogidi made the all defensive team after finishing second in the Pac-12 in blocks. And WSU baseball is set to play their first home games of the season this weekend against a top five Oregon State team. First pitch on Friday is set for 3.05 and there's a blanket giveaway for fans. The first 100 fans on Friday will also get a wristband to watch a post-game fireworks show on the field. A beer garden will also be available for fans over 21 adjacent to the Miller Family Indoor Hitting Facility. And it was truly the end of an era yesterday as the Seahawks released Bobby Wagner after playing over a decade in Seattle. Wagner made eight Pro Bowls and six All-Pro teams as a Seahawk. Wagner was also named to the Hall of Fame's All-2010s team. He was the last member of the 2013 Super Bowl winning team after the Russell Wilson trade. Wow, there may be a lot of emotion surrounding the shifting Seahawks team. There may, be, there may be a day that's dedicated just to them. Find out what that means after the break. Days, months. Hey, I'm Jim from across the street. Years. I'd like to give you this. A lifetime. Can rush by without realizing what we're missing. We lose some of the best moments. Some that may never repeat. Come on. Or detach from people around us. Our loved ones grow used to this pattern. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice to take action. It's never too late to live a full life again. Hear how many of us Vietnam veterans have managed our mental health and reconnected with our families. Visit maketheconnection.net to find out more. Today is National Get Over It Day. Each year on the 9th of March, people across the country observe National Get Over It Day. Just as the name implies, get over it. Researchers are investigating the remains of a supposed mummified mermaid that has been worshipped for centuries due to its medicinal properties. The remains are most likely a torso of a monkey sewing, sewing onto the tail of a fish. Very similarly, similarly, our very own Jake the Alligator Man at Marsh's Free Museum in Long Beach, Washington. It's get over it day, it's get over it day, but I don't know if I can get over it. Losing these, losing these Seahawks, it just, it hurts the soul, man. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Man, just like naming naming implies, get away. It's gonna be hard to do. Get away. Thanks for watching. If you guys missed anything in this or any of our previous newscasts, you guys can always watch us on our YouTube channel.